Hello and welcome to the Forley site on behalf of ExxonMobil and our contractor companies. You'll remember from your site induction that there are many key rules and pieces of information that you need to know to work safely on the site at Forley. For example, the Forley life-saving rules, the wearing of the correct PPE for each area of the site, general evacuation and emergency procedures, and the LPS system of behavioural safety that all site personnel use to keep them safe. The site at Forley comprises a refinery and chemical complex which together produce a vast range of lubricants, fuels and also speciality chemical products like rubber and solvents. In order to produce these range of diverse products, the site uses many different feedstocks and processes. This means that there are many different process areas, or units, that are manufacturing products at the site. Each process unit has its own hazards, and although they are safely operated and the Foley site has very few incidents, it's important that you know the hazards on each unit that you work on in order that you carry out your work safely and in the unlikely event of an emergency. For example, likely hazards can include toxic or flammable fluids, high-pressure systems, hot or very cold surfaces, corrosive acids or alkalis, working in an area that involves upgrading of PPE, such as double hearing protection or even wearing a life jacket when working over water. You can see that to have one induction to cover all the areas would be too long and detailed to understand. We've therefore developed specific shorter induction films for each of the units that you have expected to work on. These inductions are very important as they contain information specific to the area that you'll be working in, including the hazards and also emergency procedures and evacuation routes that you'll require in the event of an emergency. As you did with the site induction, please give this short film your best attention and please ask either your supervisor or ExxonMobil contact if you require any more assistance or clarification. Everybody working on units must have both a site induction and a block-specific induction. We need to ensure that everybody working at Forley has the right information to ensure that nobody gets hurt. Welcome to Offsites at Forley Refinery. Offsites covers a large area of the refinery more than any other unit. From Block 55, a refrigerated LPG unit in the west, the tank farm at Block 1A in the east, and the product loading pump house in the south. The offsite's operation takes crude oil from the super tankers at the marine terminal and stores the crude in tanks waiting to feed our distillation towers. Products from distillation can be stored into intermediate tankage to feed other units. Processed materials stored in component tanks are blended to create finished products. These products are then exported via ship, road or pipeline to the customer. All of these activities are controlled via console operators at CCR5 and operators in the field. They comprise the Product Loading Pump House, PLPH, Central Oil Pump House, COPH, Transfer Pump House, TPH, Block 12 Gasoline Blending, Block 20B Pressurised LPG Storage, Block 55 Top Site and Pump Slab. The function of each of these different areas and the processes used are all different despite them being part of offsites. The hazards will therefore be different as you work on them. It is critical that you are aware of the hazards of where you are working and understand the emergency procedures and facilities around you. It's the expectation of the offsites team that at all times you carry your site induction book, or white book as it's known, in order to familiarise yourself with the hazards of where you're working on a daily basis and the emergency facilities you may need in the event of an incident, such as safety showers and assembly points. Before working or visiting off-sites, you must contact the permit coordinator or area operator via radio or visiting CCR5 permit office for permission to enter the working area or unit. Off-sites communications are via channel 5 and a radio is located in the permit office for your use. Sign in to the relevant area that you're working in, being as specific as possible to your location. This applies if you're working all day or briefly dropping off materials onto the block. After completing your task on the block, please sign out of the area. It is of utmost importance that you remember to sign out. Emergency services may be put at risk, trying to locate you, thinking that you are still on the block. You must get permission to bring vehicles or other plant into any operational off-sites area. 
It's important we minimize the number of vehicles to those essential in operational areas as they are a potential source of ignition and incidents have occurred where equipment has been damaged. This applies even if you have a red all areas pass, you must still notify process. To reiterate, it's important that you give us as much information as possible about where you're working because in the event of an emergency, we may need to search for you. Offsites has two areas that have gas alarms and muster points. Block 20B has a two-tone warble, which sounds like this. Block 55 has a two-tone warble on the top site and a continuous siren bottom site, also known as the pump slab, and they sound like this. If the plant gas alarm does sound, stop all ignition sources, move across wind to the nearest muster point and await instructions. However, be aware that in an alarm condition, the nearest muster point is not necessarily the safest. When you sign in at block 55, check the location for the chlorine and bromine release muster points and the procedure for any release. This information is at the sign-in log at block 55. Gas alarms are tested at block 55 on Thursdays at 16.30 hours and at block 20B on Saturdays also at 16.30 hours. It's important to know that these areas have a single tone air horn as a process alarm and that no action is required for process alarms if you're working on the blocks unless you're instructed differently by the area operator. Also remember to consider that walking is working. On off-sites we have many different surfaces from tarmac to gravel, grass bun walls and mostly uneven ground. When you walk around use LPSA constantly, choose the safest route and don't rush. Bear in mind that all our plants are of an age where they can contain asbestos in insulation or gaskets, the presence of which may be determined from red lines painted onto pipework. If you think you may have found or disturbed asbestos, stop work and report it straight away to process. We'll now show you some of the specific hazards associated with offsites. Live tank buns. To take a vehicle into a live tank bund, permission must be sought from either the area operator or the permit coordinator. A red vehicle pass is required to allow entry to a tank bund. It's mandatory that a bun check is carried out before driving in, even if a permit is in place for the use of the vehicle. The bun check consists of stopping the vehicle at the top of the bun ramp before driving in. You must wind down the vehicle window to look and smell for any process incident. This must be done for each and every bund entry. The storage tanks contain a large inventory of potentially flammable products, and these areas must never be treated with complacency. Remember, consider using a banksman, especially when manoeuvring large vehicles. Be aware when driving up approach ramps, as these can change direction on the downslope. Be aware of the vehicle ground clearance. What can appear to be surface water may be very deep puddle or trench. On first entry into the bund, it's a good idea to walk your route. This way it's easier to spot any potential hazards. Look out for concrete cable markers, foam laterals, tank ladders, pipe bands, soft ground, undergrowth that can hide obstacles. And never expect everything to be the same as the last visit. Noise. Hearing protection is required on all plant areas. In the off-sites area, hearing protection is required at all pump house areas, block 20B and block 55. It's also required when the noise level in remote areas is above 85 decibels. An example may be working next to a running mixer motor. Product loading pump house, central oil pump house, transfer pump house, and block 12 gasoline blending. Hazards in these areas are valves that can be opened and closed and pumps that can be started and stopped automatically. Process hazards in these areas are fuel products, steam, compressed air and rotating machinery. Block 20B LPG pressurised storage. Part of the process at Block 20B is the LPG tanker self-loading facilities. LPG drivers bring large road tankers onto the block 
and blow themselves by use of an automated weigh bridge. Be aware of tanker movements when working in this area. Process hazards in this area are methanol, which is stored and pumped into LPG to prevent valve freezing. This is very harmful even if a small amount is ingested or absorbed. Ethyl mercaptan. This is an additive to LPG to enable gas leaks to be detected. It has an extremely strong smell that can cause nausea if released. LPG stored under pressure also releases from tanker venting, steam, compressed air and rotating machinery. Block 55. Process hazards in this area are noise, rotating machinery, LPG, methanol, steam and compressed air. Also, due to the remote location of this unit, snakes are common in the summer months. Be vigilant if working in and around the pipe bands. Tankage rehabilitation, or rehab as it's known. Tank rehabilitation programs run constantly. This is when we take our tanks out of service for refurbishment. These areas can be very busy and congested, and the work being carried out is of a wide and varied scope. Be vigilant in these areas for people working at height, hot sparks from welding activities, and toxic fumes from cleaning activities. Always gain permission from process before entering a tankage rehab area. Offsites also contains corrosive products such as hydrogen peroxide. Don't forget, areas where corrosive chemicals are present are surrounded by a red line where you must upgrade to goggles and rubber gauntlets when inside or adjacent to the red line area. Remember, all the details for the units are contained inside your white induction book. The information provided is critical to you and your colleague's safety. Have the right information at the right time, rather than having no information at the wrong time. Also, when you're working on our units, please at all times always use good housekeeping philosophy, use waste bins and skips provided, never deviate from your permit conditions without getting the permit reauthorized. Don't forget, a permit to work is required for any activity and should be read and understood by all involved, as it will contain additional safety information relevant to that task at that time. Also remember our units are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Please do not block access or egress to any equipment or roadway. We would also ask that if you see an unsafe act or process situation, please report it immediately, so that it can be investigated at the earliest opportunity. Pet phones are located across the blocks, dial 9 in an emergency. Even if it's a false alarm or condition, we would rather investigate the potential situation than not know. Your observation could be critical. Please remember, our goal is always nobody gets hurt. We mean it, and with your safe work on our unit, together we can achieve this. Finally, if there's anything in this presentation that you aren't clear of, please talk to your supervisor or a member of the process team. Thank you for listening and have a safe day.